Welcome! We need to talk a little bit about custom stocks. Generally, the digital stock is defined in Fusion 360. However, if circumstances calls for it, it might be beneficial to define a so-called custom stock as a 3D model. Using this model as an example, if we go to display mode and ghosted, we see here that this specific model as a regular stock required this whole box of a physical stock defined as a rectangular stock in Fusion 360. However, if we delete this representation of what would have been defined in Fusion 360, and we see here that we now have a custom stock, 3D modeled, so as to accommodate all of the model while still being significantly less in volume. If calculating the volume for this specific custom stock, the volume that will be removed by milling, this custom stock is only three liters, or so three cubic decimeters in volume, while the rectilinear one has a total of 6.5 cubic decimeters. So with this specific topographical circumstances, there is a significant amount of time to gain by preparing a custom stock like this. One, however, has to take into account that creating a physical custom stock like this might be both more time consuming and complex to achieve than a regular rectilinear one. In this example of a custom stock, more than half of the volume to be milled has been removed to reduce the time it takes to mill. In another example, we have one where the height of the landscape has been cut off to accommodate a certain thickness of material, in this case 50 millimeters. So where the topography has been too high for that, the outline or the silhouette of the model has been cropped away. A custom stock may also be used for simply aesthetic reasons, yielding something else in silhouette than the regular rectilinear model. When using custom stocks, the custom stock must be 3D modeled like this, or like this, depending on the circumstances, and must be exported simultaneously with the exported model. So let's do this for this example. Let's select both the model and the custom stock and export these. Let's export it as a Rhino 5 model. Open Fusion 360 and upload the exported file. Let's double click to open the file. Let's click Design to change workspaces to Manufacture. And here we can already at this stage expand models, expand this document, expand the imported document and expand the bodies. And here we have body 1. If we select this, we see that the custom stock will be highlighted. If we click the body 2, only the model. So thus we know that body 1 is the custom stock and body 2 is the model. Let's create a new setup. Let's make sure that the XYZ origin is correctly placed at the top of the stock, where both the X and Y positive axes are tangential to the borders of the stock. If one has a non-rectilinear silhouette of the custom stock, then it is generally advised to have one straight edge aligned to the x-axis, so as to make it easy to position the physical custom stock on the work table. If we go to the second tab, stock, then we should change the mode from relative size box to from solid. And then we specify body 1 as our custom stock. In the first tab, if we go back here, it is important also because we exported both the custom stock and the model in one file, we must also specify which body is the model. So select body 2. If we would have imported a non-rectilinear silhouette custom stock, then we might would have needed to change the origin from a stock box point, which is totally adequate in this case, to a specific selected point. And then zooming in here with the scroll wheel, we would select a corner of the custom stock that would be easy to pinpoint during the manual preparation for the CNC machine. Having set the work origin properly, as well as defining the custom stock in the stock tab, as well as the model here in the first tab, we can click OK. Thus, the custom stock is properly defined. One important note is that when you author your first toolpath for this specific custom stock setup, if we do 3D adaptive clearing here, in the tab geometry, you must make sure that the setting define stock by is set to remaining stock and that the source is changed to be not from the previous operation, but from the setup stock. This change is only relevant for the very first toolpath. If you have succeeding toolpaths, then of course those will have as source the previous operations. But for this very first, it's important that the source is the setup stock. Since we in the setup have defined both the custom stock and the model, we don't need to specify them here. Very good. These two are the only settings that are relevant for a custom stock setup workflow. The other settings may be set according to the other tutorials. Thank you for your time.